Hello and welcome to Is It Possible? I'm your host, Danny Freeman. Each week I take a different unconventional ingredient and try to turn it into fresh pasta. Then in the second half of the episode, I'll teach you how to make a real pasta sauce. And this is a real recipe using real ingredients that you can make at home using regular pasta. But this week, my unconventional ingredient is gummy worms. I'm gonna to try to turn gummy worms into pasta. All right, I have never made pasta out of gummy worms. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna try and see. So I'm just gonna add some gummy worms here to my pan here, and let's see if this is gonna melt into a nice liquidy goo. That's what I'm hoping for. My other idea was to put them in the microwave, but I thought maybe they would explode instead of melt. So I'm hoping this method works a little bit better. And oh my God. <laughs> all right, all right, they're starting to get slimy looking. They're starting to melt a little bit. They're starting to smell kind of bad, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like this might melt the way we want it to melt. All right, we've got some gummy worm goo forming. We still have some major chunks in here. It's a little bit faster than I thought it would. I gotta get everything else ready, because as soon as this melts, I'm gonna add it to the flour. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little pile of flour here. So I'm gonna put two eggs in my flour because I'm adding a lot of liquid from the gummy worms. Okay, okay, I don't want this to overheat. We've got a nice liquidy gummy worm goo forming. All right. I'm gonna pour this right into my flour mixture. All right, another concern I just thought of, hopefully it doesn't cook the eggs because it's very hot. I don't want curdled scrambled eggs in my pasta. All right, so I am mixing the gummy worm goo with the eggs. Mix it nice and quick. I'm gonna start adding some flour. Ooh, it's a nice kind of orangey color, kind of a burnt orange. Ooh, ooh, spillage, spillage, spillage. It's fine, it's fine. I can salvage it. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. So far, so good. I think it's gonna work. It's getting a little sticky. I have to do it pretty quickly because as the gummy worms cool down, they are gonna start to harden again. Yeah, definitely need more flour here. This is not an exact science because I added uh, kind of an unknown amount of gummy worm goo. I didn't measure it, so <laughs> I have to make sure I have the right flour to liquid ratio. All right, I'm kneading this together. It's coming along pretty well. It's feeling a little bit better. Sorry, my daughter's calling me. <laughs> I have a two-year-old daughter who wants to put on a princess dress. Yeah, just a minute. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish kneading this. <laughs> I'm gonna let it rest, and then I'm going to go put on my daughter's princess dress, and then I'll be back. All right, so here we have the pasta dough. It's looking pretty good, I gotta say. It's not horrible. I'm gonna wrap this up, let it rest for a little bit. That will let the gluten form, and then when I come back, we'll roll it out. This uh, pasta dough has been resting for a little while. If you think about taking a bite of pasta, you have that nice chewy feel. That's because of the gluten that's in pasta dough and resting it is one way you help develop the gluten. But here comes the real test with pasta. Can it roll out into a smooth sheet of dough? So when you use an unconventional ingredient, it doesn't always work at that point. Um, sometimes it comes out all stretchy, sometimes it comes out all ripped, sometimes it comes out sh shredded. Oftentimes when you add an unconventional ingredient to pasta dough, it just does not hold itself together the way that pasta does. So a bit of it broke off, but this we can work with, this we can fix. So I'm gonna fold it on top of itself to get rid of those holes and run it through again. And I'm gonna keep just doing that, keep running it through, fixing any holes or anything until it runs nice and smooth. All right, this is working perfectly. I gotta say, it looks like real pasta. Other than being a little orangey and smelling like gummy worms, this looks like a regular sheet of pasta dough. I first got into making pasta really because of my grandmother. She would make fresh pasta. We would sometimes make it with my family as a kid. Um, we never did this. My grandmother passed away a couple years ago. I think she would think it's really funny that I'm making gummy worm pasta. She was not one of those Italian grandmothers that's like, oh, no, 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 how could you do that? I think she would get a kick out of this, but it's not something that I ever tried with her, I'll tell you that. We're gonna start this sauce by melting six tablespoons of butter in a saucepan or a skillet over medium heat. Now this is a simple sauce. It's butter, lemons, and that's really going to infuse the butter. A uh, little salt and pepper. You can add herbs to it if you want. You could add garlic, but we're going to keep it simple. And this sauce really depends on the pasta water. So if you don't save your pasta water, <laughs> now's the time to start. So when you cook pasta in a pot of boiling water, a lot of the starch is released and it creates a really starchy water mixture that is really great to add to sauce. It thickens the sauce, it helps the sauce stick to the pasta, and here it's one of the main ingredients. So pasta water also helps a sauce like this emulsify and thicken, because even now, even though I haven't even added the cheese yet, but the starchy water will help this 
thicken up. I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese here. Like I said, we're just adding a little bit at a time. You don't want it to melt. Sometimes if it's too hot, the cheese will kind of not melt properly. I'm gonna test the pasta, see if it's done cooking. So this is my first test of the gummy worm pasta. It's a little sneak peek. All right, it's not done cooking yet, but it has a strong candy flavor, I'll just say that. All right, I'm gonna squeeze in my lemons here too. Ooh, squirting everywhere. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna add more pepper. Like I said, I like a lot of pepper in my sauces. I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch more pepper. Give us a little bit of a peppery flavor. It's very lemony. I think it's gonna be good with the gubby worms. I think now's the time to add pasta. So I'm gonna throw the pasta right into the sauce. The pasta's kind of ripping a little. I think the texture didn't work perfectly the way that regular pasta does. Let me just coat everything, and I'm gonna let it cook for another minute or two, cook down a little bit, let it thicken a little bit more. Oh jeez. I would say the gummy worms did not keep the texture of the noodles perfectly right, because <laughs> they are breaking apart, but that's okay. Hopefully they taste good. All right, it's time to plate our pasta, give it the official taste test, and see how we did. The sauce is really good. It's really lemony, it's thickened up really nicely. All right, so the pastas did not hold their shape perfectly. They're really ripping a lot. <laughs> it's more of a pasta mush. I'm gonna add a little more lemon zest on top, make it nice and pretty. All right. Here we have our pasta a limone with gummy worm pasta. <laughs> oh my God. The sauce, is, the sauce is really good, but with the lemon and the gummy worm flavor, it's like sour gummy worms. I don't hate it. But it's not horrible. <laughs> I have a sweet tooth, so. This has been another episode of Is It Possible? And I think the answer with gummy worms is yes, it is possible. We turned gummy worms into pasta. So follow along for more. Every week I'm trying a new unconventional ingredient and trying to turn it into pasta. So follow this channel for lots of cooking content, lots of pasta content, and thank you for joining.